Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome to the show. Today, it's a little bit of a mixture, kind of like looking around the tip. You don't know what you're gonna find. But first up, there is one man with a beloved 1953 Chevrolet in this week's Classic Restos, On The Road. Hear that? Ah, peace and quiet. We're in the country, just outside of Canberra, the nation's capital, on an eight acre property. It's home to a shed, a 1953 Chevrolet, and to tell us more, here's Doug. Now, complete with, well you haven't got a bollard system, you've got about 10 tonne of uh, blue metal and gravel that, that's to keep people out of the shed. That, that's original. I don't know how you get out, but I like that, Doug. Oh, good on you. That's great. That's what it's there for, so it's doing a good job. You just scoop it up and yeah, put it back every, it. Yep. every time you've got to get out and come back that's in, it. right? Yeah, yeah, I did that this morning early. I put it back there to just annoy you as yeah. best I could. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... That's Good on you, Doug. Well done. Look, you've got a beautiful property here, uh, uh, complete with a uh, beautiful dog, Labrador. Labrador, yeah. Yeah, yeah a, what they call a chocolate Labrador, actually. Yeah. And he, uh, the name is Buddy, right? Yeah. yeah. Buddy. Buddy the dog, yeah. And a great, uh, he's actually enjoying himself at the moment. He's, he's actually eating the cat. <laughs> we don't have a cat, but no, well, that's we did have one. Yeah. <laughs> You've got everything here, haven't you? Yeah, we have got a bit of everything. Got a couple of horses, a couple of alpacas, a wife, and a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it here. This is a I love these laid back environments here. And of course, we've got a 1953 Chevrolet. Now, the first time I saw this car is come up the driveway. Um, got to be the world's fastest Indian with uh, Anthony Hopkins with Burt Munro. <laughs> now, the blue car in that was a 54. Uh, the year after this one, obviously. But uh, this 53 here, beautiful. I love the interior. I love the paint. I love the condition. Um, what can you tell us about it, Doug? Well, it has a bit of a story to it. Um, I bought this car through um, – I, I looked on the internet and saw this car in, in Brisbane at a uh, place called Undercover Cars. And I rang up the man, Ron McCann, his name was that owned that place. And uh, – and I said to him, I'm in Canberra, I want to know about that Chevy you had up there for sale. And he said, yeah, it's on consignment, but, uh, mate, I said, is it, has it got any rust in it? And he said... Well, you were, you, actually, you were looking for rust or...? I, was, I wanted a rusty car. Yeah. Anyway, I said, um, he said, no, I'm a car salesman, mate. There's no rust in this car. It's a beauty. Anyway, on the whim, I bought it. I had it shipped to Canberra. It was all white. Didn't have a red top like it has today mm -hmm. or any of the little side pieces or anything. It was just a plain white car. And it had a number plate on it, which was Chev 52. Anyway, the the fellow, Ron, said to me, the owner of the car doesn't want those plates back. Mm -hmm. It was Queensland registration. And I said, oh, okay. So I, I drove it around for a little while with those plates on and registered the car with a relative in Brisbane and I got sick of people pulling me up, some people knowing that it was a 53 and saying, what are you driving a car, a 53 car with a 52 plate on it? Mm. And other people would come back, yeah, I know this is a 1952 Chev. So there was a difference between an idiot and a bloke that knew a lot and was telling me that I was an idiot. But anyway, so... I got sick of that and I... I love it when all the experts come out. I, right. I, 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 I lo love that, yeah. But anyway, I was already in the Stark Car Club in Queen Bien. I had become a member when I bought the car, but I kept the full rego. And then I, I uh, decided I would put Club Rego on it. So I took it to the 
to the registrar, or not necessarily the the person that, that passes it for registration. Lovely man who's since passed away, but Albert Noose was the man's name, and and he said, um, "Oh, that's a nice old car you've got there." And uh, anyway, he said, "We'll have a look at the see, see the compliance plate." First thing he had to check, he lifted the bonnet, and he said, "I know this car." And I said, "Oh, I don't know. Don't think you would, Albert. It come from Brisbane." He goes. I know this car. This belonged to Mrs. K in Queanbeyan here. And I said, you've got to be kidding. He said, no, the K's own taxis in Queanbeyan and this was Mrs. K's private car. I then started to research that and, and because I'd just joined the club, I took the plates off and I chased the owner of the plate, the car that was registered to last, and I rang him up. And he said, I bought it off a fellow in Sydney. And he gave me his name and I rang him up and he said, yeah, I bought it off a lady in Queanbeyan. Mm. So that happened to be Mrs K. Mm. I believe Mrs K has passed away since. She's, she was an elderly lady, but her son lives in Queanbeyan. I haven't had the opportunity to catch up with him, but I'd like to one day. So basically, Queanbeyan, Queensland, back to Queanbeyan again. Come back home. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, that's amazing, isn't it? That's a lovely story. So uh, the time you've had to carry, have you had to do much to it? No. No. As I said, I painted the top yep. and put little bits and pieces on it, but and no mechanical problems. Was there any rust in the car? No. Right. No. Ron was to his word. So the, the car salesman was actually telling the truth? Uh, yeah, that's rare, but he did. Yeah, yeah. Take a photo of that man and box him and frame him and put that up on the wall, that one. When I was a kid, I loved cars. Still do. The 57 Cadillac Eldorado Brougham was the most advanced car in the world. Cost more than a Rolls. Hand built with a stainless steel roof, cruise control, electric seats, and would you believe, air suspension. American iron. It's a passion Shannons understand. That's why they ensure my daily drive, the caddy, my bike, even the house. Call Shannons on 13 46 46. Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified service network okay so doug with this car the 53 what what do you what do you love about it why 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 a 53 oh no reason it wasn't it, i didn't i wanted a chev because yeah. i love chevs yeah. i had, didn't care if it was a 52 four six seven i wouldn't be able to afford a 57. well see this is good though because it just opens up the uh, your parameter the yeah, for right. where you went and it was just great to see a 53 in this condition there's not many around. Uh, a lot of emphasis, obviously, on the 55, 6 and 7. We've done an episode just recently emphasising those three models. So for this 53 uh, to come along after that, a little bit of a coincidence, but remarkable condition. The interior is beautiful. I love the the, the seats. are Well, not so much shape-wise when I say bolster, but they look... They look full, like they look comfortable, yeah. well padded seats. Yeah, they're they're lovely. It's a lovely old car. The, I think the seats might be original. I, I certainly didn't do them. It was back in the days when the seats were designed to be, you know, as part of suspension of the car. That's right, exactly. And this is when you hit a bump, it, as Bill will tell you, it, you don't feel the bump. Um, speaking of that, suspension wise, we're in the era, of course, of the king pins in the front end as well. Yeah. Um, so driving the car does a fair job. Yes, it's a lovely car to drive. It's it's like it looks. It drives beautifully. And, and what what engine up front, Doug? A two ten, an old fashioned two ten. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So interesting when we look at side profile of the car and around the rear of the car, we can see in fifty three, uh, still not anywhere near the dead square era of entering the 60s but you can just see that transitional shape 53 moving up to the 55 sixes and sevens and the shape almost saying to you i'm about to change you yeah, know and i was exactly. in that yeah the 54 was the last of this shape 
they started in 48, I think, this style, and then just slight slight changes along the way. And then 55, as you are well aware, is a completely different car. Now, Doug, you're part of a car club here in Queanbeyan. Tell us quickly about that. That car club is a magnificent club. It's called Stark, which is um, uh, Southern Tablelands Historical Class... uh, Hang on. <laughs> there it is there. He's been with the club a long time. <laughs> Southern Tablelands Historic Automobile Restoration Club. Thank you. Thanks for that. I Can I, that. Would you like a bit of constructive criticism to back to the president? Please. Perhaps you could make the name of the club a little longer. I'd like to yeah. think that. I'm going to introduce that if I can. Doug, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for sharing your beautiful 53 Chevrolet with us, giving the car club a good plug. Mm-hmm. At the, the length of the name of the car club took up most of today's That's episode. Right, exactly. I appreciate that. Thanks very much, Fletch, for your time. This 53 Chev that I have here and my dear wife has as well, we enjoy this car that much. We take it out whenever we can, and I just love it. When I take this car out on on a weekend, and sometimes I'm on my own, I uh, and it's a nice summer's day, and I can feel the breeze coming through. That's instead of having air conditioning, we got it all natural, and that make that gives me great pleasure to think that I'm part of. Australian history with this old dear old car that uh, her and I just seem to get on very well together. Next on today's show, a fairly rare 1949 TC MG Roadster. Meet Phil Clegg, enjoying retirement, taking in the regional bush view and enjoying his 1949 TC MG Roadster. Phil has been interested in cars all of his life so far as well as his comprehensive book collection and his model ships painstakingly constructed. Phil's knowledge of MGs is comprehensive and a car like this in Phil's retirement is doing him just fine. Phil, what a pleasure to meet you. Great to meet you also, Fletch. Thank you very much. We don't see many of these little TCs getting around. But before we talk about the TC, you, you're keeping yourself fairly occupied in retirement. Are you enjoying yourself? Absolutely. Have done for 30 years, I might say, because right. I, I retired very young. Um, right. I was able to and yep. get back to playing with motor cars. There you go. So you, you've got no time to go to work. No, no certainly not. Work just gets no. in the way, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, uh, building your model ships, we've had a quick look in there. Very intricate work. Do you find that yeah. fairly therapeutic, doing that? Absolutely, yes, I do. You need enormous patience mm. because uh, it's very intricate. And how but long does it take you to put a ship together like that? Well, the, the victory, not working on it, you know, full mm. time, mm. but that was five years. The TC MG 1949, uh, interesting car. Uh, a, uh, the, at the end of a new shape, so to speak, wasn't it, in 49? Yeah, yeah. It, were the, it, it was first uh, brought out as the TA mm-hmm. in 1936 when a, a, a fellow called uh, Leonard Lord, who'd taken over MG, said enough specialisation, which they were getting into for racing and so on, mm. let's get back to the old idea of using parts that we already have mm. for the main Morris cars and Austin yep. cars. Yep. So he, he introduced the T-Series, mm. which used the Wolseley engine, a mm. uh, long-stroke Wolseley engine initially, and a nice little body, mm. and uh, that became the TA. And then in 1938, the Morris 10 came out, and that little engine called the XPAG engine was a magnificent little engine, 1250 cc's. Mm. Then when the war came, of course, motor car production ceased and they went to war work. Mm. But in 1945, uh, the war had only just finished, they were able to start building little MGs again, but they, yeah. they widened the body by four inches, mm-hmm. changed the, the shackles of the springs, mm. and actually built, I don't know, a couple of hundred in 1945, mm. which is a pr- pretty amazing. Anyway, 
that that model, the TC, went into 1949. Mm. We look at the, um, the concept of, well, 1949 roads to styling um, in the United Kingdom, and we, we see this vehicle as a side profile with huge wheels, big tight diameter rims, yeah. uh, relatively low profile tyres for, yeah. for the diameter of the rim. But then we've got a very low body on these, yeah. on these big wheels. So, yeah. you know, you could see where they were trying to go. Low centre of gravity, big wheels. I guess for what it was, although it was a narrow tracked car, how did it handle in the, in it, the corners? It handled superbly. Mm. I mean, uh, that was the fun of it. You could take any corner, very responsive, mm. just sheer mm. fun. Uh, this little car, the TC, is uh, credited with starting the sports car movement in America. Right. Because American servicemen who'd been out during the war yep. and saw RAF pilots jumping into their MGs and driving to the Spitfire yes, yes. Uh, were completely taken yeah. in and uh, arranged to take them to America after yeah. the war. And that they yeah. credited with well, starting the sports car movement. Absolutely. The, uh, the launch of the Corvette in the early 50s as well mm. with the, the blue flame six-cylinder engine. Mm -hmm. Boy, didn't that take on. Yeah. Um, interesting times. Speaking of British as well, nice to see you've still got a little bit of that British racing green there in the in the uh, centre of the grill. Oh yes. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> well, this was a this is a standard colour. What's the name of this colour? Uh, old English ivory, I think. The old English ivory. Yeah. I was waiting for for <laughs> Phil to say beige or something <laughs> no, like that. No. Um, I love the interior in that it's all there, hundred percent original. The dash, the wheel. A little bit of Art Deco still going on there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got its own unique style there in the cockpit, hasn't it? It has. And it's interesting that the speedometer is uh, in front of the passenger to scare mm. him to death. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas yeah. the, uh, the taco is in front of the driver. And that's yeah. more important. It's well, more important absolutely. to know what revs you're doing, sure. frankly, yeah. than what speed yeah. you're doing. Mm. Okay, patients. tell us about the engine up front, the size and what's going on there. Yeah, it's a little overhead, the overhead valve, 1250cc engine uh, called the XPAG. Got twin SUs, um, compression ratio probably in the, in the six to one. Yeah, okay. Um, they supercharged it. They um, raised the compression ratio. They did amazing things with it. Mm. And, uh, it, you know, in racing versions. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. This TC is insured with Shannon's. Perhaps you'd like to pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And the Shannon's Club awaits you. For more information, to visit and explore Australia's largest and most comprehensive online automotive hub, visit shannons.com.au. Well, look, we're going to uh, wrap things up there, Phil. Mm -hmm. um, I want to uh, thank you very much for the opportunity My to pleasure. meet you today, <laughs> to feature the MG. And uh, I want to thank you for that. I'm glad you're enjoying retirement. You've got a beautiful yes, place here, nice. lovely backdrop. Yeah, well... It's not behind us as a backdrop, but over there. <laughs> it's, it's nice, a, isn't it? Yeah. It is really, really nice. Yeah, and, well, uh, thanks very mm. much, Fletch. No, that's all right. Now, thank, thank you. you very much, Phil. Thank you. Take care of yourself, and thank you very much and, uh, for sharing this beautiful uh, 49MG. My great pleasure. Now, uh, before we go, now, Phil has restored many cars, and he's had a lot to do with cars over the years, and we're going to leave you now with Phil as he runs through some of his past collection on his home computer. Okay. All right. Good <laughs> yeah. on you. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Fletch. All right. I hope you enjoy it.
Okay, well, th this is my dad's first car, which is an Austin York Saloon, 1935 model. And uh, I used to sit in the garage and push the clutch pedal in and go through all the gears, with the result that at age 11, I was able to drive the thing. So. <laughs> and then this is my first car, which I bought in 1954. 55, sorry, 55. I found some wire wheels down at a wrecking yard. They bolted on because they had the same bolt hole pattern as the original Fiat, but the Fiat nuts weren't uh, quite long enough really, and I one night of going around the corner of my house, uh, the wheel came off and bounded into the bush, and I eh, skidded to a halt on the backing plate. Then this is a bit later, this is a little Fiat Topolino. Actually, the second version of the little Topolino Fiat 500. Then my second car was a 1932 Ford V8 Roadster. This is the first of the Ford V8s. Then my brand new car I bought was another Fiat, little 500, new over 500, which we actually went on a honeymoon in that little car. Then because I'd been frustrated in trying to build a Riley special at one point, and that was interrupted when we uh, moved to Hong Kong. On a, my, when I got back, I uh, wanted to take on another project, and this became a 1927 Triumph Super 7, which was a minus body, and I got it home and sort of shoveled it off the back of a truck virtually, and managed to find a body which was useful only as a pattern for the woodwork, which I then put together myself. And it ended up like this. It had a quite advanced little car. It's sort of a, a luxury Austin 7, if you like. Then when I retired, I wanted another retirement toy. And I found this Mark II Jag in, Ad in uh, Adelaide. This is a car I bought when I was working at Lark Hoskins for Austin's at an early point in time, and uh, an old colonel had traded this in. He'd bought it new from Lark Hoskins in 1938. Now, this is one, my second rest restoration when we got back from Hong Kong, which was a 1928 Buick. Next project was an old Chevy. Uh, once again, a complete wreck requiring a ground up restoration which I did, and I did again everything on this. Uh, replaced any frame panels, uh, frames that needed replacing. Uh, I painted the whole car. I even did the trim from a kit. It probably ended up better than brand new, that car. This was my first MGTC, which I bought after I'd sold the Chevy. A, another TC came on the market having just been restored. I sold the black one and bought this one, which I still have today. So I've owned this for 37 years. This is my wife's MGB GT, which uh, she loved. This is an old Rover that I bought at, uh, from a deceased estate. It was in immaculate condition. Then this is a P3 Rover, which I'd always admired because my dad nearly bought one way back in the late 40s. Here it is alongside an earlier model. This is a little Morris 8, which I bought down in Crookwall. The guy should have paid me a couple of hundred dollars to take it to the dump, because it was an absolute, that was just in bits. So we put it on a truck and virtually shoveled it into the garage. And I worked on that for the next year or so and did every single thing on it. A new frame, went back to tech and did a refresher course on welding, so I did all the panel beating, even did the trim. I did all this myself. This was an interesting one, another Jaguar. This is a very rare two-door XJC with a V12 engine. Uh, very rare out here. They only brought 188 into the country and mine was one number 187. And this was an XJ40, another Jaguar that I bought a very low mileage car, very nice car. This was a friend's special TC, and it was very quick. We took it to the Adelaide Grand Prix, 
This is another Jag I've, I bought, which is an X300, which is a very nice car that was a improvement on the XJ40. And then I come to my latest Jag, which is a X350, really the last of the XJ sort of shape before the new model. So there you go, that's my, my car collection, <laughs> which I've enjoyed for many years. Well, how cool was that? Another show done and dusted, of course, featuring Doug and his 1953 Chevrolet. Then Phil and his amazing patience in constructing those model ships, enjoying his book collection and sharing with us just some of his 1949 TCMG. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.